Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how to run the program that monitors the driver's activity. So the first thing you want to do is you want to enter my GitHub, which I will link below. Then you want to go to user camera, you want to go to drowsiness detector, and then you want to download these files. And I've mentioned and I've showed you uh, before in the GPS video how to download these files using down git. So let's download them. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to install the necessary libraries that we need in order to run the program. So we need SciPy, Dlib, CV2, and Immutil Immutils, I have no idea how to pronounce that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to install CV2 or OpenCV. So um, the thing about OpenCV is that there's two ways to install it. You can install it using pip, which is a package manager, or you can install it uh, and compile it from source. So uh, there are advantages and disadvantages of each type of installation. So installing it from source is extremely, extremely time consuming. There, it takes three hours for me. Every time I install it from source, it takes me at least uh, three hours. Um, but it is much more customizable and you will always install the latest version. Uh, so that's really the benefits of installing it um, by source. So I actually have a txt file uh, down here that shows us how to install um, OpenCV from source. So the make j4, this command will take you one, two hours, you no, know, at the very least, every, every time. So sometimes it can be very frustrating because of the long installation process. Um, so another way to install it, like I mentioned before, is we can install it using pip, which is a package manager. Um, and the advantage to that is that it is much, much, much faster. Maybe it'll take five minutes maximum for me. So uh, in the interest of time on this YouTube video, I'm going to install OpenCV using pip. Um, but if you want to install OpenCV by source, which I do highly recommend if you have the time, uh, then just go to downloads, uh, go to OpenCV, follow this uh, txt file, and I will link a YouTube video um, about how to install OpenCV by source that helped me uh, when I was installing OpenCV by source. So uh, the first thing I do want to mention is I want to mention um, virtual environments. So I highly recommend, especially when you're installing OpenCV, TensorFlow, um, no, not NumPy, SciPy, whatever, I highly recommend that you install these using a virtual environment. Um, and uh, the thing is, a lot of these kind of programs, a lot of the code in these files re require certain versions of OpenCV that um, or certain versions of these libraries that might not be compatible with each other. So when you're installing, um, you know, pip, using pip, installing all these packages in these libraries, uh, using um, a virtual environment is a very good way to avoid any compatibility issues and just keep those packages organized as well. So I do highly recommend um, uh, installing a virtual environment and um, installing a lot of and the majority of your libraries in separate virtual environments for each um, each function and each uh, program um, each yeah each kind of like no code so uh, let's uh, I've already kind of um, written the instructions about how to create a virtual environment uh, so I already installed the virtual environment, but obviously it's no harm just writing these pro these functions again. So um, yeah, so I already installed um, the virtual environment. So the next thing you want to do is now you want to install um, 
you know, create your virtual environment. So I wrote name environments. It can be anything. So let's call this um, user. Uh, let's call this, no, not user, drowsy. Drowsy dash environments, right? And this will create a folder. So your virtual environment is essentially a folder. So um, then we want to activate our virtual environments. So you see how right now I created this uh, virtual environment in the home directory. Uh, so what this means is because I created it in the home directory, home slash pi, in order to access the virtual environment, I have to always be in the home directory. Uh, if I created the uh, my virtual environment in desktop directory, I had to first access the desktop directory in order to um, access the virtual environments. So next thing you want to do is source drowsy environment bin and then activate. And now you see down here, I'm in my drowsy virtual environments. And you can, if you can see in my Pi, um, it will create a drowsy environment down here, a folder for it. So uh, another thing is if you want to leave your virtual environment, just press deactivate. Um, and you can see it down here and right here, but I'm not going to, you know, leave, I don't want to leave my virtual environment. So the first thing uh, we want to do is we want to install OpenCV. So let's just quickly update the Pi um, and just see if there's any kind of updates, uh, whatever. And another thing I recommend is these two uh, functions, sudo get update, sudo um, app get upgrade. I recommend you run them um, at least once a day. Once you boot up your Pi, once every two days, um, once a day. Um, it just helps maintain your Pi, make sure that your libraries are up to date. Um, and if you if you decide to run these two commands once a week, for example, it might take up to an hour. So you want to do it every day to just save yourself time uh, in the long run. So my Pi is updated um, and upgraded. So like we said, mentioned before, we want to um, install OpenCV. So we first have to install uh, some necessary kind of packages that OpenCV requires. So I have um, these uh, commands and they are in the txt file uh, and you can find them in uh, the txt file that we downloaded so um yeah don't be stressed if you can't see these all i'll link them Okay, so we installed uh, the necessary uh, libraries needed uh, for OpenCV. So now let's just install um, let's just install OpenCV. So once again, I mentioned before, in the interest of time, uh, we are just going to install it using pip. Uh, if you have uh, time um, and if you want a more customizable kind of option, I do recommend, like I said before, installing it from source. So you see how this took me one, two minutes maximum. So it's extremely fast and uh, no fast and just convenient. So let's test out whether or not we installed uh, OpenCV. So you want to uh, import CV2. 
It works, and let's just see what version of CV2 we have. So 4.5.3, which I think is the latest, most stable version. So we're good. So uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to um, install the other libraries um, necessary. So if I just go to the downloads, right, Jasmine's Detector Pi, cut it, go to my virtual environment, paste that in here. So, uh, if we see the Jasonist uh, detector, open new main, so we can see it needs certain things, it's SciPy, it needs these things, and we don't have them, so we need to install them. So the first thing we do is we just need to install um, the necessary libraries. So once again, I have these commands linked on my GitHub, so no need to stress or kind of worry about that, worry about it. So next we're going to install dlib uh, which is a which basically um, is a facial kind of landmark um, and it helps us kind of map out the different points on someone's face and that's what helps us detect whether the user is yawning or tired for example
Okay, so we have successfully downloaded the um, the necessary no libraries. Okay, so now we just need to run the program. So first off, we know that we saved the file, the drowsiness uh, file in the drowsy environment. So we have to access that environment first, then file, sorry, the file first. And then we have to access where we saved the file. So now we can uh, run the environment. So it's Python 3, new main, pi. Press enter. You see how it's working? No, I'm distracted. And then press Q to break the loop and exit. Okay, so um, another thing I want to just mention is um, is just a file. So main is without it appending into a txt file. New main appends the data into a txt file. And then I also want to do and kind of show you the parameters file, which is very, very, um, very important. So uh, what it does is I... Um, have thresholds and intervals um, because the way it works is I don't want you know my eyes just dip close together for like like half a second and then all of a sudden it says oh you're drowsy so that's why I included a threshold right and it's the same thing for the distraction if I'm checking my blind spots or checking turning my head um, so that I'm checking my blind spots, I don't want it to be picked up as distraction. So that's why I gave it a distraction interval so that um, maybe I'll take, what, two seconds to check my blind spot and that's not greater than three seconds, so it won't set anything off. But if I'm turning my back to you know, talk to the passengers in the back seat, and that's obviously gonna be more than three seconds and that's when, um, the drowsiness detector, sorry, the distraction detector will get set off. So the important aspect to kind of realize is a lot of these intervals, a lot of these thresholds are very customizable, uh, depending on the type of, just depending on, um, you no, know, especially like the eye uh, drowsiness kind of threshold, because I have relatively kind of small eyes, I had to kind of play around with the code so that it would work um, efficiently and effectively for my really type of eye. So a lot of these thresholds, you can just play around with them. Don't be afraid to kind of customize them because they do work um, specifically uh, for you know, that person or for a certain uh, really person. Uh, so that is really all for the uh, for the user kind of camera, the driver kind of camera um, introduction. And if you have any uh, questions, feel free to drop them in the comments and I'll answer them as quick as possible. Thank you and bye.